this is the season, as mentioned earlier, where we actually celebrate a lot of different holidays of many different religious faiths. And although uh, many of us who have a Protestant or a Catholic uh, background tend to highlight Christmas, there are actually many other faith traditions that are going on. And I was reminded of this when I visited the local rabbi, newly arrived in the uh, city of Winston-Salem this week, and he took me on a tour of the synagogue and showed me the, the beautiful stained glass windows he had in, in the uh, congregational space where they worship. And I was able to get more in touch with the very important traditions of that particular faith. And it's really infinitely rich uh, the more you understand any particular faith. Uh, and has many, many different sides and aspects. But let's consider the many holidays that occur in this month. Hanukkah began December the 18th at sunset and will end Monday, December the 26th. Hanukkah is a Jewish festival commemorating the recovery and the subsequent rededication of the Second Temple at the beginning of the Maccabean revolt against the empire. Far back in the midst of history, they snatched this memory of what was a part of their people's history and honor it. As many of you know, the festival is observed by lighting a candelabra that has nine branches, commonly referred to as the menorah. One branch is typically placed above or below the others, and its candle is used to light the other candles. Each night, one candle is lit until all eight candles are lit together on the final night of the festival. And that resonates in some way with our religious tradition because we have a candle in our services as well that we light every time the chalice flame. December the 21st or 22nd is usually the date in which another tradition, the winter solstice, is honored. This is considered broadly a, a pagan festival, but it has very deep roots. Since prehistory, the winter solstice has been a significant time of the year for many cultures, affecting so many aspects of life. It was marked as the symbolic death and rebirth of the sun. The gradual waning of the daylight hours is reversed ultimately after a decline and begins to grow again. Some ancient monuments such as Stonehenge are aligned with the sunrise and sunset of the winter solstice. It is a special time of year for many and it touches on a naturalistic way of viewing the religious life. Kwanzaa is yet another religious tradition that is celebrated in the month of December. It is a celebration of the African American culture and it be, runs from December the 26th through January the 1st. And it culminates in a communal feast on the sixth day. It was first honored this particular ceremony and tradition in 1966. So it is a relatively new way of honoring a particular religious faith. It's interesting to me that there are seven pillars or principles to Kwanzaa, and each of the seven days of this uh, holiday are dedicated to one of the following principles. The first one is unity, trying to strive for unity among one's uh, peers, one's family, and one's community. The second principle is self-determination, trying to define and name ourselves as well as to create and speak for ourselves. Third is a collective work, a principle of collective work and responsibility to build and maintain community together 
and make our brothers and sisters' problems our problems and to solve them together. The fourth principle is cooperative economics, to build and maintain our own stores, shops, and other businesses, and to profit together. The fifth is to make, is purpose, to make our collective vocation the building and developing of purpose as a community. The sixth principle is creativity, and the seventh principle is faith, which is to believe with all of our hearts in our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, and the righteousness and importance of our struggle. I found uh, those principles fascinating in that they seem to correlate with so many universal ideas that we all acknowledge as important. And the Buddhist tradition also has a very important holiday. The eighth day of December is known as the Bodhi Day. The Bodhi Day is that point in Buddhist history that supposedly was the exact date when the Buddha arrived at the point of enlightenment after a very long time of struggling with trying to figure out how to be free of suffering and how to help other people's people to be free of suffering. He finally created a balance and he found a way, a path forward to be free of suffering and began to spread that message to others. The Bodhi Day services and traditions uh, vary among uh, Buddhist traditions, but it occurs all over the world. They may choose the, to commemorate this by the study of the Dharma, the teachings of the Buddha, chanting Buddhist texts, and performing kind acts towards others' beings. And in the Hindu traditions, there are at least four major holidays in the month of December. December 3 commemorates the creation of the holy book of the Hindus. December the 4th, according to Hindu culture, is a day of fast, a fasting, or should be a day of fasting to achieve freedom from the cycle of birth and rebirth and suffering. December 6th is a festival of lights devoted to honoring the important deities of the Hindu faith. And December the 8th is a holiday in which people are called to express gratitude and worship the goddess of food, Anna Purna. What a wonderful thing to have a goddess of food. And of course, there is Christianity, of which we are all aware of, which we honored last night and we, in a way, honor today. Finally, among this tour of holidays that fall into this month is Human Light, a secular, an entirely secular holiday, which occurs on December the 23rd. It is meant to celebrate and express the positive and secular values of reason, compassion, humanity, and hope. It was created as a holiday and developed by the leaders of the New Jersey Humanist Network and first celebrated in 2001 in New Jersey. So again, another fairly young tradition. Since then, various uh, secular and free thought, humanist and atheistic groups and individuals have adopted this holiday as part of their December tradition. In 2004, the American Humanist Society recognized human light as a holiday. The name itself was chosen to indicate that this holiday is not about supernatural beings at all, but about the light within humanity. It is remarkable, if you think about it, that multiple tens of millions of people all over the earth, without being coerced, come together in various ways to celebrate and commemorate their faith tradition. And I'm sure that there are quite a number of people that feel coerced to do so by friends or relatives, but there are tens of millions of people who, for various reasons, do celebrate a holiday and do find it meaningful. And that, I think, 
should give us pause. As I consider these different faith traditions, I choose to focus on what is common among them and not be perplexed by all their wild differences. What do these traditions have in common? That is the more interesting question to me. And indeed, it is the case that they do have a great deal in common. All of these faith traditions with these specific holidays attempt to get people together to form community around a common identity and belief system, to come out of their isolation as individuals and to come into some oneness of being together as a group by a common identification with beliefs. They all help people in various ways to be thoughtful about being compassionate with one another, about being mutually respectful with other human beings. And indeed, some of the faith traditions honor the whole full spectrum of all life and just don't uh, preoccupy themselves with human beings. All of these faith traditions and their holidays strive to help people connect with something much larger than themselves, something that preceded their lives and will succeed their lives. But if they are connected to this larger thing, their lives will be brought into a more important drama and story than just their individual lives, as important as that might be. All of these faith traditions strive to give people a sense of their place in the great scheme of things. All of these religious traditions with their holidays encourage people to direct their energies in constructive ways, to renew the world, to restore the world, to rebuild the world, to make peace and to bring justice to the world where there is injustice and lack of peace. They all symbolize and represent a positive and constructive way of being in the world. So all of these things represent the attempt by various religions through their holidays and other ways to fulfill a deep human need a deep human need to belong to something more important than self, a deep human need to learn to be compassionate with others, a deep human need to be of service to others, a deep human need to care about people who are strangers or marginalized and who otherwise one would not be concerned about. As you use, we are unique. We are unique as a religious movement in that we have tended to embrace modernity and all that means much more rigorously and comprehensively than other religious traditions. That has been both a form of liberation and has created special challenges. But we are not at all unique in all of us having a need to address these issues that I just enumerated, to be a part of something special, to learn to be compassionate, to try to bring healing, to try to bring justice to a world permeated with injustice. As we enter this new year, may we all renew our effort and our commitment to one another as individuals and as a congregation to do this vitally important work of restoring among ourselves and expanding the circle of those who are engaged in this work of trying to be fully human in a world that is filled with difficulty and strife, to give hope in a world that often feels hopeless.
to bring a sense of we can do something into a world that often feels indifferent and apathetic. Uh, 